Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this edition of Tinkercad Workflows, one of the things we're going to take a look at is uh, the pitfalls of de designing a bolt head or a hex nut. So a couple little tricks in the workflow that I kind of wanted to share uh, in this tutorial, if you will. So basically, if we if we go to create a hex nut, the first thing we're going to do is start with a hexagonal prism. So we're going to drag that into our work surface. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to use our puck to bring our ruler in here. And so therefore, we have our measurements. Now, the first thing you might might do is you might be tempted to look at this and say, oh, this 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 is 20 by 17 so I'm pretty much you know going to you know just make it square but one of the important things to to realize is where the measurements are coming from now one of the pieces that makes this a little bit difficult is the fact um, we can't get this straight on so as I talked about in the initial video when I tilt it up it's still at a couple degrees angle but let's look at it more closely so the piece is we notice that this is coming out to being 17.32 now the measurement area it's actually taking is from this this edge to this edge alright so now this the second uh, measurement we see here is 20 now notice what it's taking this measurement from It's basically taking it from uh, this edge over here and then basically to this edge over here so this isn't squaring it off because one might think you know that that if we just took a square box let's just take a square box and I'll give you an example so let's make this uh, smaller and then let's just drag this out and then let's put this in here and then if we were to look at this um, let me pull this in a little bit. Oops, wrong way. Uh, I gotta get the right object here. So if we, we we skinny this in on this one, and then we do the same on this side, up to it roughly. Uh, oh, I broke one of my own rules. I forgot to change that. So we snug this right up. Also, you notice I covered out in the last video about adjusting the snap grid, how I don't turn it off. I turn it to low setting. And you just notice how by doing that, I've now basically brought it, you know, it, it tightens right up to a very snug edge, if you will. So that's why I do that. Rather than turning it off completely, is it helps me... Um, keep a little bit honest and true to the edge of objects so anyways now if we see this it's it's actually rectangular if you will because of, of my sizes and this is the way you have to think about dimensioning the the hex nut so um, let's kind of go back to this and if we take and we'll we'll get rid of the square for the time being and go back to the hex uh, I also want to lower this down and make this a little bit more palatable size-wise. We'll make this actually 4 uh, millimeters. So if we wanted to create, for example, a standard um, a hex head for, uh, say, a quarter 20 bolt, basically our measurements would be, um, let's see here, round head to 10 and 12 so if I go this would be basically 12.1 and this will be 10.7 and so now th these are the dimensions of well a particular hex head bolt that I had that that was a quarter 20 bolt so um, again you see the perspective of these two do not match and also I have found in, in measuring them that this wider perspective here is usually not in a perfect ratio to this in other words the heads are heads or nuts are not perfect there's, there's a bit of tolerance now a good rule of thumb I found is about at least one millimeter 
uh, difference. This is this happens to be a little bit more. So instead of 11.7, this is is 12.1 uh, uh, of the particular bolt that I measured with the calibers. Uh, but if I were to go to um, Let's just make this 11.7. You see that kind of squares it up a little bit more. So one of the things I definitely, tips I recommend is if you have a specific batch of nuts you plan on using, because where I use this a lot is creating um, uh, fill objects, because what I will basically do is, again, let's take a square and um, let's drop this square down and we'll make We'll make it three and then we'll put the nut in here and then I'm just for the sake of simplicity I'm going to duplicate the nut I'm going to do I'm going to select both objects I'm just going to do a quick line both in center and all right so now I'm going to turn this into a hole and I'm going to do this and I'm going to group and then boom I've now got my uh, hole for that. Actually, I'm going to back up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up a little bit and then I'm going to do the group. So now, see, I have my recess and then, for example, let's finish this out a little bit. So I'm going to take a cylinder. I know roughly a, a, a quarter inch 20 bolt is six by six millimeters. So I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to take this object I'm going to set center it in here. Whoops, I'm going to push this down a little bit before I do this. Push it down and make it a hole and do the group. Okay, so now I have a recess. That's not too centered, is it? Let's go back. Uh, uh, for some reason, it's getting a little funky. All right. So let's do just, uh, then hit a line and hit, hit a line. Okay, so we should have a little bit better hole. All right, so now the hole's in the center. So now we, we can we can take and place our nut in here. It can go right back in here. Our bolt can pass through, pass through the nut because if we were to make this a nut, let's go ahead and just do that real quickly. Let's, let's also make this this a nut. So basically we'll do the same thing. Uh, six and six, turn it into a hole, put it on here, select this, let's do a line. So this one's already aligned, we'll align this one. And whoops, I'm going to push this down a little bit, going a little too fast here. And then group. All right, so we have we have our we have our nut. I'm not going to worry about threads in this. In a future episode, I'll show you how to do threads um, inside the nut. But for this, it's just fine. So we're going to do the align. So just make it all nice and pretty. And so now we now have our our nut in there and uh, well we're sticking it through so I'm gonna pull it up so it's a little bit proud uh, so we see we got the bottom down here so the bolt can come through and we can place the bolt so let's let's see what this looks like so let's again bring another object um, let's do six and six and then what we'll do is we'll take this down here and again this is the great thing about a line now unfortunately as I covered out in the last video a line only works in one dimension of, of the object so you can't if you have things that aren't um, you know that things that have offsets it simply doesn't work so uh, again now we have our um, and then let's just simply duplicate this and whoops I'm going to do this and just simply, uh, darn, I need to just do this. Uh, let's move it down a little bit. Uh, 
Let's select this. We group this. Let's make it a different color. Orange. Okay, so we now have created, we've dimensioned our hex nuts. We've shown how to do an offset in, in an object. Because again, this is one of the big things that I do a lot is... Um, you know, create inserts inserts for bolts. Now, one of the pieces, I want to spend a second or two talking about this. Now, we've made this the absolute size of the bolt. I don't recommend doing that. Uh, again, most of this has been centered on how do you actually dimension the object. I would actually make the object a little bit bigger. So now keep in mind something here. So one of the things that happens when we do... Um, additive construction with plastic is that plastic is actually pushed down there's a very narrow space there's pressure pushing on the filament to push it out and push it onto whatever it's coming into contact with and that's going to push it outward a little bit so now roughly if we're going to and, I, and i'm not going to go into all the, the the math of this but i'm just going to you know look at <clears throat> excuse me look at it a bit logically if i have two thousandths uh, of a millimeter of um of banding that I'm pushing out probably my expansion is going to be you know since technically it's a circle or you know circular in dimension it's it's going to be about 0.1 so uh, rough order is at at least half of what your layer thickness is to your nut to allow that extra space now I, I'm going to give you a heads up that's going to be tight and that's probably not going to be enough so what I usually do is I make it roughly a I add the layer thickness. So if I'm if I'm going to print at point two, I will typically add point two to this. So basically what would happen is this would become eleven point nine and then uh this would become again ten point nine. So now again it's a little bit oversized by about two thousands. However now this this will probably fit in there very snugly, especially if you're printing with ABS. Um, I haven't done a lot with PLA, but the limited experience I've had with the PLA is it doesn't seem to expand as much as, as ABS does when it, it extrudes. So just kind of another piece of rule of thumb uh, work tip in, in dimensioning is is go with the, the layer thickness plus the size for the dimension when you go in there. Now... Typically, if I don't, if I want it to be a little bit loose, which is usually the case, I will go about 0.5, and that that gives it plenty of room, and I know it's going to fit in there um, because that gives me actually about 0.3 to play with of of extra room, and usually works out pretty good. So again, I think you kind of see how this comes together, how you can make a, a recessed. Um, component for an, uh, a, a nut to fit into or a bolt head to fit into because again we could also take our bolt and, and place it in here and this could retain our bolt head and keep it from moving as we tightened it down if we got it in there right uh, again you can kind of see the idea so now the bolt head is in there the bolts passing through and uh, you know pulling down on this structure so this is a lot of what we do in 3d 3d printing especially in you know making something what i would call in in, in home manufacturing or, or something productive um, is some sort of fastening brackets connecting structures etc so this is kind of a rudimentary piece to really understand in building that because one of the things you really don't want to hack things together at the end of the day you want them to be solidly connected etc and this is a good way to do it you also see a lot of things on, on, on Thingiverse, you know, where where they simply don't have recesses for bolts. Now that's sort of okay because you can have a flexibility of choosing what size uh, of bolt and nut you want to use. Uh, however, that does tend to come loose after a while, and especially if you're building a machine, there are internal vibrations, uh, resonances, and things like that where you kind of want it to hold together. You want to have something like this. So uh, again, this is a very important ability to understand on how to put together. So anyways, just wanted to take a few minutes, kind of uh, share this tip on dimensioning hex nuts because uh, the first time that, that I did this, I, I just was in a hurry and I didn't realize that there were really two dimensions uh, to the hex nut. I assumed that, that they would be, they would view it more as a square and then just basically lop off the sides but they don't 
and, and so my first print I'm like okay why doesn't this fit in uh, another tip that that I will give you be cautious with it uh, if I do want it to be very tight uh, in in the uh, say the the red piece uh, what I will do is again make this the the same size but what I will do is I will take and I will heat up this nut or bolt with a heat gun and then um, insert it into the plastic uh, and again since it's only going to be a couple thousands that couple thousands will melt down pretty easy and it will be a perfectly tight fit uh, the other thing that I can do that you can do is also use epoxy I, I love JB Weld 15 minute quick set it does a great job on all types of plastic to metal bonding uh, so I also use that quite a bit where I want to be sure that it doesn't come apart. The other thing that doing this is if you do make this a little bit larger, um, again, this, this opening in here, if we make this a little bit larger and then epoxy the nut in, what that's going to do is strengthen it, especially along the lines of striation where it's been printed uh, and give you a whole lot more solid object than, than if you were just to fasten it with the nut. Uh, also be also be uh, cognizant of your infills when doing this. I suggest that you know if you're going to do an inserted nut, do at least a 30% infill. Um, if I had good luck at 30%, I would go. If it's going to take uh, any type of lateral force, you know, in other words, pushing from the side, etc., I actually raise that to about 50%. And again, have had good luck with those numbers in ABS. So again, your mileage might vary, but again, this the idea is to kind of give you some workflow tips. So, anyways, hopefully this helped you out, and look forward to seeing you in the next workflow video. Cheers.